So I set up this sweet background with my lights. I programmed it to be as close to the Creative X branding <laughs> as possible. <laughs> yes, that's cool. Hey friends, welcome to Creative X. I'm Brad Hussey and I'm a web designer. Today, I'm gonna to be playing around with this user interface component challenge on Front End Mentor. It's free, feel free to do it yourself. Link will be down in the description. The brief is essentially to build this results summary component and getting it as close to the, to the design as possible. It's just basically a user interface exercise. We've got a desktop design, we've got a mobile design. So what I'm gonna try to do is just see how close I can get this in Editor X, no code, drag and drop, and just make it as close and as beautiful and as responsive as possible with Editor X. Let's do it. So I'm gonna start the challenge by just clicking start challenge and that'll download the assets. So I can download the starter. I don't need the starter code because it's gonna be with no code. I want the Figma design. And I don't care about the readme file. I'm not actually trying to do, you know, I'm not gonna submit this or anything. I just want to build it out. And we're not gonna be coding. This is meant for front end designers, front end developers, but we are in a world where we can be front end designers and create websites without code. And so my tool of choice for this is Editor X. So here's the Figma design mockup, the design file. We've got the desktop view. Very nice, this is a really nice user interface. And we've got the desktop active button state, and then we've got the mobile view. It's very, very simple, but these sorts of things are really fun to practice. Whether you're you're wanting to design this and match it to the design as close as possible, or whether your goal is to learn how to code it and match it as close as possible, in our case, we're gonna be building this in Editor X. So now I'm going to fire up a new Editor X site here. I've got this little gizmo over here called the Stream Deck. In a previous video, I talked about the Stream Deck in my video where I gave you a, a tour of the workspace and we redesigned the set. So I've got this gizmo called the Stream Deck and it lets me automate lots of things. One of the most fun and useless, maybe not useless, um, gimmicky tricks I have is just I press a button and it starts a brand new Editor X site for me. All right, so first up, let's grab some colors and add it to our site styles library. So we've got our colors right here in Figma, nice and simple and straightforward. I could just copy these over. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy all of these colors over in our color styles, add it to our site styles library in Editor X. Let's go. So what's next? Let's find out what this font is and see if we can either use the same font or find an alternative that works. All right, so this font is Hankin Grotesque, Hankin Grotesque. I prefer Hankin Grotesque. Uh, <laughs> let's not do that one, because uh, I don't think it's on my machine. It looks like I don't have it on my machine. So I'm just going to opt for the trusty Inter font. So let's go to my typography here. I'm gonna change all of the headings to the Inter font. All right, all the fonts and colors are added to our site styles. That makes things nice and speedy and fast. Let's take a look here at the design and figure out the hierarchy of this user interface here. What are the containers? What do we need to know? Let's look at it. So it looks like to me, I mean, if I wanted to save some time, I could just look at the layers here in Figma and uh, <laughs> it'll show me roughly what's going on here. We've got a parent container that wraps everything in it. Makes sense. Then we've got another container here, main container. Inside that container, we have another container, which is gonna be a left, in the left column, rounded corners, there's content within that. In the right column, we've got content, probably within another container. So this will be a container here. Relatively straightforward. So let's start off by adding the main container, the hierarchy. Let's just kind of add what, you know, the basics. All right, so the main container is added. I, I rounded the corners 32 pixels, which is what I can see in the Figma design. When I click on it, I can see that corner is 32. It's got a light shadow as well. As you can see, a drop shadow. So let's mimic that. And that's looking pretty close to me. Let's get the rough width here. Now I'm gonna make this responsive. So, you know, this is 736 pixels wide, but we'll probably make it responsive. 
So let's just start things out at a minimum width of 700 and let's go 40 pixels. I don't like 736, let's do 740. Minimum width 740. Okay, so now we're gonna add two columns. Let's do that. All right, now in this left column, I want to add another container. Now that's gonna be in that left grid and we're gonna fill it and I need to round those corners. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that from here. Let's try it. Maybe I can. 32 pixels all around. I think I can do it. Perfect. All right, so instead of this blue, I wanna make it a gradient. And normally here in Editor X, you would go to this design tab and then change the background color to a gradient. But I realized that you can only do that currently at the time of this recording with whole sections. So I can add the background gradient to a section and I can get real crazy with it. But I can't do it to elements and containers, uh, which is a little unfortunate. However, looking it up, I could see that it is a common request and I am just voting for the issue right now. I want to see this as an option because it makes a lot of sense to do so. Now, there's always a workaround, okay? This is what's fun about designing and building things is if you can't, if the feature's not baked right in to the tool you're using or the framework you're using, there's always a way to figure it out. So what I'm gonna do is in Figma, so I'm gonna take the background of this element and I'm just gonna export it as an SVG. And then I'll use that SVG, upload it into Editor X, I'll make it a background and I'll stretch it and everyone will be happy. Not as happy as if I could just natively add gradients, but I'm sure that'll come. So let's do this. All right, now I'm gonna upload that SVG file into my media library. What's nice is SVG files are super lightweight. So this is like 435 bytes. This takes up virtually no space on the server and in download time. So this is a fine workaround in the meantime. So what I'm gonna do is actually, now that it's uploaded to my site files, I'm going to see if I can change the background or rather I'm going to add that. Here it is. It's my vector art. I'm going to attach it to this container. And let's see if we can just stretch this out 100% width and height will be auto. It's going to scale proportionally. It's actually the exact shape we're looking for. So it does kind of do it here. Now the only problem is my container behind it. I can kind of see it here. I'm going to select that and I'm gonna remove the background on that. Let's see what happens. It's kind of working, but I still can kind of see a little bit of that white edge. So I can just adjust that a little bit. There we go. Now we're in business. So I'm gonna take this whole section and I actually want space around the whole thing. So I'm going to make the whole section a minimum height of, let's go 800 pixels. And ideally it's 100 VH, so it's the full screen height. This is looking pretty good. Let's turn all those back on. Now, let's go ahead and add content within that section, within that container rather. So we got result, got some feedback, and we got a score. Let's do it. All right, let's make sure we got the right font size. This is looking like it is, this heading is 24. So let's make this 24. And we're gonna pop that onto the top. If I pop it to the top, I mean align it to the top, if I'm using the technical jargon. And now I will make sure this whole container, no, I'm gonna add this text and these other elements within another container and give padding to that. That's what I'll do. So now let's add a circle shape. Let's see if we've got some decorative a circle here. Okay, here it is. Now, as for its color, it looks like this one also has a gradient. So what I'll do is I'll just take this shape and I'll export this shape as an SVG file. So now what I'll do is I'll just get rid of this and we'll just upload our own SVG file. Here it is. I'll add that to the page. I'll make sure to attach it to this container. Now we're talking. Let's take a look in the layers. Cool. So now we're going to add another heading and some more text. And that font size looks like the large heading is 32 pixels, so let's do that. Now, if I wanted to be really SEO friendly, perhaps, or maybe semantic, I would make this an actual heading. But because it's just a user interface component for like some sort of app, 
I don't really know if the SEO benefits matter that much. So I'm just using paragraph tags that are just styled differently rather than heading one, heading two, because this to me is not really a heading. It's just some sort of success message. Now for this, I can copy and paste the text from Figma here. It's just a success message, but I kind of want to try something here using this new Editor X feature called Create AI Text. So Editor X is starting to incorporate AI a little bit into their tool, and I think in a tasteful way. Instead of adding too much all at once, um, I think this is kind of a nice little test. So we're gonna try it out right now. This is the first time I've ever used this, and I just wanted to write like a success message, a success message saying that their score was in the top, you know, 65% or something like that. Let's see. So what's your business type? It's, um, what does this look like? Some sort of test, sort of like software. Let's go memory test. And it's going to be a paragraph. What's the topic of this text? Other, add your own topic, success message. And then it would just be like success message, congratulating the user on having a score in the top 10% of users. Let's, let's see what happens. All right, so now it's given me three options. That's kind of cool. So it's kind of, let me see, uh, I'm not gonna read all of them, but congratulations, you've achieved a score of the top 10% of users for the software, your dedication and hard work has paid off and you should be proud of your success. Sweet, so I could just like use the text and replace it or I can copy it, paste it, or copy it, paste it elsewhere. So I'm just going to use the text and I'll just modify what's there. Okay, we're gonna change the color to probably, I'm assuming it's like light blue, okay. Let's do light blue right there. And now I need to add the score, 76 of 100. So let's add another paragraph tag in here and we'll attach it to this and we'll center it, make sure its width is, let's go like 50%, perfect. And this is gonna be 76, it's gonna be very large. I believe it'll be, let's find out, white. Now what I wanna do is add the other element here. Then I'm gonna start cleaning things up because semantically in its hierarchy, everything's just kind of a mess and just thrown on the screen. I wanna give it some sort of hierarchy here so that the containers are in the proper place. So let's add one more here, which is of 100. So let's just add a text element. Okay, so now I'm gonna select these two text elements and I'm gonna stack them. Item spacing, let's do like negative 15 pixels. And the stack is a special container in Editor X, which just allows you, it's like Flexbox. Uh, it just helps you with adjusting the layout. So now I'm gonna select actually the vector art and the stack. And I'm gonna place that in a container, perfect. So if I want it to be like really awesome, I would rename this to be like score this whole element, this whole container is the score. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this stack and make sure it's vertically and horizontally centered. Perfect. Now I can take this, this container element and well, actually I need to first stack this text here and here. So let's do that. We're gonna grab those, we're gonna stack them. Let's make sure that they are aligned nicely and the space between, we'll just do like 20 pixels. Seems a bit much, let's just do zero. That's fine. The width of this whole container, let's make it more like, well, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this, this, and this. I'm gonna stack all three of those. So now all those are in a stack. I can adjust the spacing between everything. So this one, I want the margin on the bottom to be like, it's probably around 50. So that'll be, let's do like 40 seems better. I wanna take this whole stack, center it vertically and horizontally. That looks much better. And now the spacing here, uh, I'm going to need to maybe take this container, making the stack have some padding. All right, so just to make sure that this text has the right spacing and padding, I'm going to make the text itself, maybe this whole stack, it'll have a width of 80%. That looks good. The line height on this, text I'm a little picky about. So I'm actually going to adjust that, make that 1.4. That looks better. All right. So now we've got these items here 
And what I can do is I can add them as a repeater, but the issue that I can already foresee is these have different colors for the items. Now the thing is with repeaters, it repeats the style of an item and clones it across all the items. So I can design one item and it will repeat that same design across as many items as I want to add. With the content, it won't repeat the content. I can change the content to be whatever. But because color is a style, that means all the colors will be the same. So I can't toggle to different colors easily. Now I can using Velo and a little bit of JavaScript, but I just don't have the brain power this late in the afternoon to just code right now. And I kind of promised at the beginning of this video, it was a no code uh, video. So I, I don't want to code right now. We're going to add a little container and it's going to be 80% width. Minimum height is going to be like 56. All right. This is going to have three columns. And now we're going to round out those corners. The color of this first one is going to be that red. All right. Already looking good. We're going to add a little decorative shape here. It's going to search for lightning. All right. So this first one's looking pretty good, but I need to make sure we've got some padding or better yet, maybe I'll just center this text. No, I don't want to center it because I believe this is all aligned. This is aligned. Okay. So yes, I'm going to need to take this container and add some padding and on the left and right, we're going to do 15 pixels. Perfect. And so we'll take this shape, line it to the left. And I'm actually going to make that first column smaller, a little bit smaller. That's better. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is looking good. So that's the first one. It's going to duplicate that out four times, change up some text and some icons and some colors. It's super, super easy. Okay, I'm going to take these four and I'm going to stack them, make sure they're all nicely distributed. Item spacing, we're going to just make sure they're all aligned nicely and the spacing in between, we're just going to do 15 pixels. Okay, I'm going to change these shapes now. Let's find a brain. Ah, oh, there's no, oh, there's a brain vector art right there. Perfect. I'm going to add that. We're going to swap it out, change the color. And the text is memory. Makes sense. Brain. How good's the memory? Ooh, real good. 92. Okay. And now we're going to take this and this and this and stack it. Make sure it's nice and aligned. Perfect. Okay, let's open this up now in a preview. <laughs> that's, that's perfect. Now, probably not responsive. No. So it's supposed to just do what? It just stacks. So like on top of each other. So let's edit that. Let's go to our mobile view, take our container and switch this to a one by two. Make sure the wi minimum width, I'm gonna get rid of minimum width and the width is gonna be 90%, no, 100%. Okay, adjust a few things here. Let's see. Cool, and all we're gonna do now is just make the font size a little smaller right here. And let's preview that. All right, desktop, tablet, and now mobile. Sweet. That was pretty easy. We had a few workarounds that we needed to do. If you like this video and you want to learn more about EditorX and how to build beautiful user interfaces and websites and your creative business on top of EditorX, join us in the CreativeX crew. Link is down below in the description and the pinned comment. And I will see you in another video. Cheers.